Hi guys. Tonight we're going to uh, continue on with the uh, B stand. I've got to finish making the final part for the legs that, that hold the rack up. And out in our country we've got lots of ants and uh, uh, all kinds of insects that want to invade the beehives. So I always put a, a trap on the leg to keep ants from being able to crawl up mainly. Uh, and tonight we're going to put a four and three quarter inch hole in through this uh, quarter inch plate. This is a six by six plate I've already cut and prepped. This goes on like this and is welded on to make a watertight seal around the outside. And then the hole will allow the pipe to go through. Now, I could get my old plasma machine out and cut that hole but I really want this to be a watertight fitting. And so what I'm going to do is cut the hole on the lathe with the trepanning tool and then bevel the inside so I can get a good weld all the way around. That way the water or liquid, sometimes I pour a little oil in there, uh, will keep the ants from being able to bridge and climb up the pole. So we're going to use my Axelson lathe here and I cut the hole. Uh, I need a four jaw chuck on it, so I'm going to show you how I changed my chucks. But before we get started, I need to find the center of this plate so that I can use a tool in the tailstock to line this plate up in the four jaw chuck. And uh, I just do it the old fashioned way. You guys see? You know, if I put on my glasses, I can see too. I uh, just need a scribe and uh, just take and make your corners. Just draw a line connecting all the corners. This little carbide scribe so that it'll make a, a scratch line on there. If I was doing this more precise, I would go ahead and blue up the surface like this is. That's a, a blue link layout ink that uh, you can see your lines very clearly. Now all my plates are cut exactly the same. So by lining up the jaws on one time, I can make them all uh, turn out equal. I'm going to use a little tool that I don't ever see anybody using. And I've had this thing for 20 or 30 years. Well, it's, it's right at 30 years. This is a optical center punch. It has two pieces. This is a hardened uh, center punch with a point. And then this is a plastic lens that you look through the end and on this end it has a little circle and a dot transcribed so you have two holes in your holder you insert that in one I always take it out put my holder over the hole just roughly insert that in and then you look inside and you can see a little point you center it up on your scratch mark, then you put the punch in, and then you hit it. I think they still sell these. I just never see anybody use them. This is one of my most used layout tool I have. Let's see if you can see that. See how it makes a nice little center mark? Now that I've got a center mark, once I set up it on the, the four jaw chuck, all I have to do is use that to align it. And then it'll be the same for all the other uh, five pieces. This is a 1954 uh, Axelson. Uh, it's a uh, 16 inch by 30 inch length for the workspace. Uh, I do have an 18 inch four jaw chuck that came with it and I run it all the time. It's kind of shedding here. I don't know if you can see that. Some person decided John Deere yellow would be 
really good on all my handles and it chips off. As I sit here, I pick at it while I'm waiting on things to finish. Pretty soon I'll have it all gone. I don't know if I'll ever paint this thing. I use it so much that I don't have time to restore it. and keeps the rust down at least. Now this chuck is heavy and frankly I can't safely lift it anymore. I doubt if I ever could safely lift it. So what I'm going to do is use my gantry crane and uh, pick it up off of here and put on the big one. I sure can't pick up the 18-incher. Got a hook here that we bent. This basically goes into the jaws in that position. And we tighten it down. Use some more views of this. That's the three jaw chuck with the lifting attachment. This is my homemade jib crane. It's got a half ton uh, trolley and a chain hoist on it. I wish I could say I invented this, but I stole it off a, a guy's video a long, long time ago, and I don't remember where I saw it. In fact, it may not have been a video. It might have been a post on a forum. This uh, four inch pipe is attached up here at this top with a socket from that plate going down inside that pipe. So it just rotates around. It comes down here to the floor and this is where the ingenious part was. That plate on the bottom has a two and three eight or two, two and five sixteenths uh, trailer hitch ball welded onto it and I machined a cup to fit up inside that pipe and this pivots on top of that ball. It's got a lot of grease on it and it's just a very nice cheap easy way to make a pivot. I've got some of my chucks and place plates back here. That's our boy we're looking for right there. These things all have lifting rings where I can put one. Some of them have holes for them and some of them don't. This one up here does not have a hole in it so I built up that that ring right there. Okay let's get this out of here and we'll start changing. One thing I do have to be careful of my crane doesn't like my TV and they it attacks it every once in a while. Let's get you in the stand and I'll go to work. Ryan, I don't know how you cope with your chain hoist to all those chains and everything. This mess in this one gives me a... Makes me... Alright. I think we'll probably have to let it loose so I can get all the collar unlocked here. In fact, I think I'll do that right now. Turn it upside and get that one down. That's two of the six. 
many of those, sir? Uh, I guess it's five. <clears throat> now it's six. That means I don't have them all. Let's make sure that one's that one's done. There we go. You know, for about 35 years, my main lathe that I used all the time was the South Bend Heavy 10. Very rarely did I need a bigger lathe. There's one hell of a difference in running a, a South Bend 10, 13, even 14. I used a 14 for years than one like this. Everything's big, heavy, and just a lot harder to use. But would I trade it? Nope. But I do regret selling my, my tin. I sold it to a man for a fair price. But it came in a lot handier for most of the work I do than this. I've got a Monarch 10 EE that I'm working on. But I'll just have to suffer for a while. All right. thought that I was going to have to make a hook in this but the weight and the counterbalance and all force that hook up into that bin. I haven't ever had a problem. I guess you could be super safe and make a circle up there but I haven't needed to yet. off. Let's put, pick up the big boy here. Every time I do this I think of Ryan's uh, radial arm drill falling to the ground. We've got the height. Well, I was wrong. Need more. Put you on the other side. I learned from my video on the, the Miller 225 about having a little bit more light on the subject. So I'm trying. 
Now this is an 18 inch chuck that I got with a machine. I haven't ever done any restore work on it. It looks like it's rusty, but that's the way it was before. And I sprayed it down with Bow Shield. Now that I have more time, I'll probably end up making it look a little nicer. Okay. Sorry you can't see very well, but there's not enough room for both you and me. All I'm doing is lining up these six posts. And we're in. And so now I need to lock one of them. There's one. Reach over and grab another. show you what I'm doing. If you all stay there, don't get in the way. I'll let you watch from there. Okay? Okay. So basically these are locks. They turn and have a recess cut into them. And basically lock against it. Let me see if I've got one. Well, I thought I had one to show you, but I don't. I think this is a D6 mount. I'm not really super sure on that. Okay. And I've got all those. Before I take it completely loose, I'm going to rotate it around. And lock a couple more. You can see where it says lock right there, pointing that way. <laughs> they did that so I could see. Okay. Five of the six locked right now, so I'm fairly confident it's not going anywhere. Take you off. And now we unscrew the ring. Put that on so it doesn't get lost. And the crane is finished with it for now. Well, a little rust on it. We're going to have to scotch bride all that up. Pretty soon we'll make a proper cleanup job on it. How's that? All right. I like how they're numbered. That way you can go through here and tell where you are. That's six. I'm going to start by locking one. Then I'm going to rotate it 180 degrees. Hop on four. I'll we'll go back and hit three. Over just then I think I can do both of them going that one's fine. Get old. Oh 
All right. Kind of collects dust when you put that bow shield on it. I personally don't like to blow off chucks because you get all the stuff down in the holes and just gums up the works. That three jaw we took off, I'm going to go in and take it apart and clean up the scrolls on it. All right. Now this is an independent four jaw chuck, like most of them are. It even has slots here so that you can uh, put in T-nuts and posts and if you got something really big on there you can stabilize it very well. It's a good little chuck. It took three of us to unload it out of the pickup. It was heavy. Alright, so now this piece here needs to go somewhere and honestly I don't know if it's going to end up here I think these I could either switch them around but I think we can probably get by with it going right there what I'm going to do is put this live center in the tailpiece and that'll give me a point right there so I can line that up and then we'll adjust the jaws to it. This is the uh, tail stock on this Axelson. There's a few things I really like about it. One, that the feed handle is on this side instead of in the back. Uh, the second thing is this is a two-speed handle. Put it in there and you get a lot of fast travel and get set up and then it pull it out it goes into a slower speed for drilling and things. You basically are limited to making this either with power if you want to use the the apron to push it back or using its crank system here. It's pretty easy. This is a lock of the quill and these two bolts lock it to the rails. That's about all there is to it. It works pretty well. The handle's a little bit lopsided and the the lock right here if you look at it it's got an eccentric cam on here and it raises this up as you force it down. Needs a little bit more tightening but so far it's not been a problem. Now I'm going to run this out quite a bit so I can get around and six inches. I'll move the apron back. And I'm going to have to move the whole shooting match up. This gives a little more Maybe that'll look better for you. Light on the subject. Okay. Let's see if we can find the, that'll work.
There we go. Close enough. Now, this is as close as I could get these jaws in. What I think I'm going to do is put a measuring stand off and bring them on out to these face of this jaw. So I won't dig into the jaws when I trepan it. I think that's close enough for a weldment. I was digging around in my box and I found this old tool. I don't know if it's got enough of the right arc on it here. Excuse me. There's a little arc. Can y'all see that? I don't know if this works. I always see people on YouTube doing this. Maybe it does. Anyway, I'm going to put a fresh edge on this. And uh, maybe you can see the focus on that. I don't know. How's that? And we'll see if it'll work. If it won't, I'll cut out a new tool. This one was handy. I got a question for you. It seems like every time I get around a big four jaw chuck and, and, and get in it dialed in and everything, I get this irresistible urge to wear an orange glove. Like this one. But due to the COVID virus, uh, this is my last orange glove and I don't want to order any more. People need them. So, uh, I'm just going to have to go bareback for the good of the country. Well, I think I'll call it a night on this one right now. The jokes are getting too corny. I'll bring you back and we'll work on it some more tomorrow. Thank you. Thanks for watching.